and I'm here with you live doing another video. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a great day. Today is the uh, uh, second, uh, the sixth day, the seventh, uh, the sixth day of the um, second month of the year. And I hope you're having a great one. All right. So I just thought I'd talk about this uh, a Mandela effect. I don't like to talk about this. I want to talk about other stuff, but it's just hard for me to ignore um, the big ones. So as I said before, I'm not bringing in little ones. I thought I'd talk about some uh, big ones. You know, um, this is a pretty big one, I thought. Um, I mean, the whole thing's really big, but... This one is the first temple has ever just been found, um, but it was found back in 2015, which I've been seeing all the, uh, basically, that's that's uh, the major uh, time frame I think we have is 2015 for a lot of these uh, effects. So, um, and I've been correlating a lot of data into that. So. This is called the Gobeki uh, Tempe. It's a uh, it's the Neolithic archaeological ruins. They were first uncovered in the 60s, but their significance was tr uh, wasn't truly realized until 1994. So this guy came and he was an archaeologist and he saw some papers up at the college and he said, "Hmm, let me go down and check that out." He ended up renting out and. Ottoman house um, in Turkey. Anyway, so they found. Sorry, some lag. Apologize. Uh, send in money. I won't have any lag. So uh, there's this temple that, anyway, they just discovered it predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years. Um, and they say it's the oldest temple ever found. There's a lot of animals uh, depicted in the ruins and they didn't have to dig down uh, deep to find it. Even plows were hitting the top of them. There, uh, some of the pieces are 11 tons, um, all moved and of course they don't know how, but this one uh, predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years. In my old timeline, I didn't, Stonehenge was the oldest one, okay? There, was, it, there wasn't anything else. If there was something else, we, I would have heard about it. Um, so it's predates, it's almost, tw uh, they're saying almost 12,000 years old, but abandoned for 9,000 years. So it just kind of popped up. Um, so there's, there's t 25 things that are supposedly, um, really crazy about it. I'll run through a couple of them. Seems to have been backfilled by those who built it. So whoever built it. They kind of backfilled it so it, it'd be more easily accessible later on almost, um, which is really weird. Predate Stonehenge summer riding by over 6,000 years. I said that already. That's friggin' crazy. Arche architecture far ahead of its time. Um, they, they would be impressive. They're engineering empowered. They just don't know how kind of it came together, as I mentioned. The effort to require to build it was ridiculous. Um, the sheer effort in size, like, like just to show you, and it's really pretty. Uh, you know, you can see the water. I take it from where it is. It's, it's uh, amazing. Uh, now, in 1994, we had this discovered, um, but yeah. But yet it didn't show up till, you know, supposedly 2015 when it, when it came up. Here's another, you know, photo of uh, the temple from the inside. That photo was from Wikimedia Commons to give them credit. Uh, but the largest stones weigh up to 10 tons. So, and that's one of the stones I used that for the cover. So it's a, it's a pretty cool find and it's just amazing that they didn't, we didn't know about this till, I've never heard about it. Um, but so 
you could think of it how you want. Maybe a timeline incursion. Um, anyway, so I hope you guys are having a great time. Um, hope everything's going well for you. Hot again. Um, what else is going on? Um, I was going to talk about some more spiritual stuff. So let's get into, you know, the second half. Um, so when I've been doing... Um, you know, I do distance healing. So when I do distance healing, um, what I've found is a lot of times I'm blocked and I'd be blocked. And I'm like, I can't reach this person or something. I keep trying and trying and you just like nothing happens. So invariably what I really have to do before I do a distance healing a lot of times or a healing in general, I have to ask questions, you know? Um, so it's like a doctor. So I have to find out like a family history. So I go, okay. So, you know, and now overdoing so many over the years ends up being like, I have it narrowed down to like a script almost, uh, like a regular doctor would. So I ask like, okay, um, I guess you had a bad breakup maybe with your boyfriend. And the answer would be, maybe yes and that's why you're in this you know or somebody would be in this you know negative position uh and invariably they say okay the uh you know boyfriend was doing this with somebody who was like uh, a witch or something and they were doing demonic stuff and that's why you know all these bad things happen to me so ladies you have to be t you know together about who you're uh, you know seeing but um, the other thing is that a lot of times I do a healing and that would be something, but, you know, that I'd have to, you know, try to correct, uh, you know, before a healing could take place. But one of the things I was talking about is generational curses. Um, so I do believe in generational curses. So and what happens is if if like the parent, like the father or grandfather or mother or grandmother or something like that did something, you know, uh, like an offense against God, like that could be carried down, um, you know, through generations. Uh, and a lot of times I'm trying to do a healing and I'd be blocked. And it turns out that the generational curse is, uh, you know, blocking healing. So I just thought I'd talk about that because I, you have to kind of clear the parents and then you could, then you could work on the child or the adult child in, in many cases, but, uh, sometimes the parent has passed away already. So it takes, you know, a lot of praying involved to, to get that somehow, you know, changed or resolved because there's, uh, you know, a lot of negative, you know, karma going around, I guess. And, um, so it just seems like when, when, you, you know, when I do a healing, uh, a lot of times, not a lot of times, but once in a while, it gets end up blocked. And then when I do the, uh, you know, then I'll have to find out you know, what's going on. You should really, as a responsible, uh, you know, healer, you should really have a talk to people ahead of time anyway and find out what's going on with them. Because if you're not um, together, you know, at the you know right mindset, you know, I'd be, I could be trying to, you know, you know, the, the energy goes where it's supposed to go and it goes, you know, in the best place possible. But with that said, you should really know what you're, um, you know, trying to help with versus going in blind. So just a word of advice to other, um, people, you know, trying to do that. I know there's other people and, um, I have a lot of friends through, you know, social networks and such that, um, you know, do what I do. Um, and I appreciate that. So just thought I'd, you know, help you a little bit, um, with what I'm saying. Um, I'm pretty advanced at what I do. So there's some neat stuff about it, but it's not like easy. <laughs> it's not like, it's not, you. it's like, you know, it's more like if you're doing distance healing, it's more like, you know, for instance, it's a job and it'd be more like, you know, clinical, a lot of stuff. Uh, it's like you're, you know, a doctor or something. Um, so anyway, um, this thought I'd talk about that new temple that popped up and I hope everything's going well for everybody. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people in my environment having, um, 
especially just over 60. You know, there was a guy I talked to the other day, 65. And uh, let me see what time it is. Yeah, I have time. He's 65 and already he's starting to go senile. And I saw someone the other day, it was about 66. Maybe she, no, she's probably younger, 62. And she she's like going senile. So there's so many, so much, uh, you know, aluminum and, uh, you know, these, um, these microfibers, these nanoparticles in our environment, they're so bad for you. So that's really the other half of this would be the warning about, you know, the, uh, you know, nano stuff. So I talked to this guy the other day who was a, um, he he's, works for an insurance company. So he's, um, doesn't really work in, you know, beneficiaries, but he, he knows the, um, what's that word? So he knows when, um, basically all the bad stuff's going to happen. Like, you know, how long do you have to live and everything, Act actuary. So he does, he works as an actuary for an insurance company. Like he's always doing actuary tables and whatnot, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I always think, so I like talking to people. Anyway, I was talking to him and I asked him what's the most dangerous thing really out there. That, um, and he said, nanotechnology with the nanoparticles. It's in your shampoo, it's in your food, you know, it's, it has, so many you know negative things so i just thought i'd bring that up that we really one of the worst things in our environment is uh and you have to think of everything around you as your environment is uh, you know you have to have situational awareness is this nanotechnology and everything so we have these little nanoparticles and obviously um you know there people talk about being in the air all the time so um i'm sure you're well aware of what's going on what well, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to know uh, something about it. So, for instance, I did a um, search back about, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago, and I found um, this patent in uh, the year 2000 that or 2001 for uh, nanotechnology. You put aluminum in the um, in jet fuel, and once you put aluminum in jet fuel, it goes a third as far. So at the minimum, you know, this isn't a secret. So at the, you know, with this patent, so at the minimum, I would think that a lot of jet companies, you know, fuel is expensive. So to go a third, for, third as far with the same amount of jet fuel, all you have to do is mix in aluminum, the cheapest, most plentiful substance on the planet. Of course, a lot of these, uh, you know, corporations are doing it. Uh, so once they put that in the jet fuel, you know, that's coming out of the tailpipe, obviously, of it. And then you get these, you know, contrails and conrails behind the, uh, you know, plane. So that's, that can explain a lot of stuff. But just to know that um, our environments are very polluted and we have to do um, what we can to unpollute this environment. So I'm in this uh, environmental kick right now. And we all are because of this... Um, you know, it's getting hotter and we, um, you know, should know about how we're polluting the planet and getting everything whacked out of, of uh, alignment, you know. Uh, a lot of these celebrities are coming forward talking about it. Um, so there is a, um, um, what's that guy's celebrity? Anyway, um, he was talking about it as well. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Like, subscribe, share. Love you so much hope I made a little bit of sense to somebody and you enjoyed a little bit. Um, if you want, comment. And